thank you for joining me today. I'm the project manager and tech support team leader at Dynamic CCTV. Today we're going to take a look at the Central Minmo solution. So this is one of the temperature screening fish recognition terminals from Hike Vision. This is a powerful unit, especially for likes of access control and also time and attendance. So you can use this as an attendance system for staff within the building, which can generate automatic logs that are then sent to HR, either daily or weekly. And you can also use this to calculate overtime, as well as also using it for visitors as well. So you can create visitors and use it as a visitor management system through the Hike Central licensed software. So we're going to take a look at that. I've got a few slides to go through and then we'll have a look at the back end of Hikcentral as well as the control client. And I've also got a full attendance system set up on our main server on site and um, so I can show you some of my attendance logs myself as well through there. So for the thermal part of it, extreme prominent at the moment, especially with what's going on in the world. So this works as a temperature screening solution. So anyone that emits an abnormal temperature, which is usually set as 37.5 degrees as default on the units. So this allows you to have a screening solution basically on entrance to your building. The, camp, the module does have to be mounted internally and it will also be configured to your own specifications on what the elevator temperature triggers on. Um, so you can increase that or lower it depending on what you're wanting it to do. A standalone the unit works at plus or minus 0.5 degrees. You can use it in conjunction with the black body calibrator for the unit and that will bring the accuracy to within plus or minus 0.3 degrees. But the calibrator does have to be in the image of the thermal lens in order to be able to use that function, which can be difficult depending on where the actual terminal is mounted for that. But you can always speak to ourselves dynamic and we can go through that with yourselves. So with the unit itself, it only takes one second for the thermal camera to actually detect whether there's an elevated temperature and that can be logged within Hicksample itself per an employee. If you've uploaded a list of employees within the company through the access control system, it can also be set to trigger an alarm, which can go through to your control clients, or it can send an email as well. The Minmo terminal itself is a touch-free temperature screen terminal. It's a way of easily giving people access to a building and use it as record to record attendance and also simultaneously check that person's temperature without, without having it to be in close contact with that person. And it can be configured so that it doesn't open the doors or unlock the doors if an elevator temperature is detected. And that alarm can then go through to HR or the management team to then deal with it depending on how that system is going to be deployed on site. So it's very versatile on what it can do. And this allows faster screening and you're not having to have someone stood at the door with a the thermometer checking everyone's temperatures. It's done as they enter the building and it will also take a register of that person attending that building. So the temperature measurement range for the units between 30 degrees and 45 degrees with an accuracy of 0.1 degrees uh, with a deviation of plus or minus 0.5 degrees. So plus or minus 0.5 degrees is when it's used without the calibrator and it will be within 0.3 degrees if used with the actual calibrator. The authentication distance for the unit is 0.3 metres to 2. metres 2.0 meters away from the terminal itself and it will actually display on screen whether or not it's a normal temperature detected, an abnormal temperature and whether or not that person's authenticated as using their facial credentials. You can also configure it to put a reminder on screen to wear a face mask and you can also set it so that it won't open the door unless a face mask is worn um, depending on the rules for the actual site itself. The attendance checkpoint. So depending on the entrances to the site, you may have a terminal for people entering the building and then a secondary terminal for people exiting the building. But a single terminal can be used for both entrance and exit, which you'd set as the checkpoint, which we'll take a look at when we have a look at the backend web client of Hicks Central. And the face recognition speed for the unit is 0.2 seconds and the accuracy is around about 99% on those 
for that. Another thing to mention is when mounting the terminal itself, it's got to be mounted in a room with a stable temperature and that not something that doesn't fluctuate wildly. And you can also ensure that if there's any air conditioning in the room, um, it's not creating a draft or near the actual terminal itself, as this can affect the accuracy of the temperature readings from the unit. So there's two different mainline technologies at the moment. There's the Thermopile technology, which is used by some third party companies, which works in an efficiency of five seconds per person. And then the Hikvision solution with the Minmore unit is using thermographic technology, which is a better way of doing it and it will actually measure against the whole screen. Whereas with Thermopile, um, you have to set a specific area within the screen in order to detect a person. And it only takes one second per person to actually screen them and also to authenticate them using their face credentials. But you can also use a card instead um, or a key code as well for that. So this is just an example of the actual on-screen results. So you can see there we've got a normal temperature detected and an abnormal temperature detected, as well as a stranger alarm there. Um, so that will display on the actual touch screen on the unit itself. And so when the person stood there, they'll know and be told by the terminal if their temperature is abnormal or whether it's a normal temperature that's detected by the system. So after the thermals, the thermal minimal units powered on, you do need to wait 90 minutes to allow for the unit to warm up. If you do use the unit during this time, the accuracy of your results may not be correct. So it is advised to wait for 90 min minutes from the initial power up of the unit before it is actually used for temperature screening. And you can use the option on the unit to see the ambient temperature that's detecting and use the thermometer within the room to check that to make sure the both match up. When someone enters the building, it's generally recommended to wait three minutes indoors, especially walking indoors or anything like that to get the most accurate results. If someone's exercised a lot beforehand, um, it's been really strenuous exercise, that can elevate their temperature, could be an abnormal temperature detected. So a lot of places now, if an abnormal temperature is detected, they'll screen themselves away from the area, will move away, wait five minutes, and then check their temperature again or use a different form of temperature checking as well to confirm the actual result in a safe environment. If a person's wearing any hats or face comfort coverings, in order for the unit to work properly, it's best to ensure that the forehead's completely clear, so there's nothing covering the forehead, or this can affect the actual temperature readings from the terminal itself, so it is looking at the forehead for the unit. And in a lot of scenarios, if it's in for example, a foyer or an entrance area of a building, the best way to use the terminal is to have a screening channel. So have people walk in front of the terminal instead of just walking past it as such. So having the kind of screening channel through the actual foyer um, to then send from the terminal and just screen the people as they walk in. So that's the terminal itself. So now we're just going to take a look at some of the points of Hick Central. Hick Central itself is High Vision's licensed CMS software that allows you to centrally control all of your Hick Vision solution. So whether this be standard cameras with recorders, you've got also NPR integration in the system. A much more full temperature screen solution is integrated as well, which we have done the webinar on previously for that kind of solution. There's more advanced alarm and event handling through Hick Central. So IVMS 4200 can be limited in the terms of events that you can have with the free software, whereas Hick Central can have events triggering other events on the system or arming them. You can also do, so if you have an operator on site, an alarm is triggered through to their control client. If they don't acknowledge it, it can then, the alarm can then be sent to their manager after a predefined length of time and their manager would then get a notification then this hasn't been dealt with, basically what do you want to do with it? Do you want to acknowledge it through there? And it will also log all of the events. So whether or not there are acknowledged events, the operator entered a remark on that event would all show on that. And with the Hicksentral, it's designed more towards larger scale systems generally. Multiple users and multiple clients stream cameras on site and remotely it does handle that a lot better than the IVMS 4200 does and it does allow you to centrally manage all of the users of the system and anything that a user does on the system via digitally zoom an image, playback, live view, uh, where they're blogged in from, 
will all be logged on the server logs for Hexentl for that. And it is also a fully customizable solution with the Hexentl software. So if there isn't something that it doesn't do and it needs to in order to be able to use it on the site, customization requests can go in through our cells at Dynamic CCTV and we can work on that with Hike Vision to get that customized to meet the requirements for the site if there was a need for that within the system. And there is a lot more integration with the Hexentl software and also different solutions with the selectable modules which are add-ons to the system and third-party integration with the actual software as well. So this is just the overall architecture of Hexentral. So you can see we've, on the left-hand side, we've got our cameras and NVRs as well as our DVRs, um, which are your TVI units system. There's a mobile client, um, so a mobile app to use on Android and iOS. And there's also a web client, which is generally used for all configuration of Hexentral. And then you have a desktop control client for Windows PCs as well, which you generally your operators use for the system, which we'll take a look at today, as well as the web client. There's also a few different storage options. So if you've got an MVR or DVR on the site, those would be recording and Hexentral can then search those recordings and play back through the Hexentral control clients. We can also use a centralized storage system, which is PStore, which would run on one of our HC storage servers. And you can also use the hybrid IP SAM units, which are the Hickvision units for large scale storage solutions, which you can always contact our project team for any details on those. So what we're gonna do is on the central with Minmo deployment. So you can see there, we've got an overall topology of a Hexentral deployment using the Minmo terminals. So you can see we've got the Hexentral server at the headquarters and then we've got branch office A and branch office B which are remotely connected back to the main Hexentral server um, back at the headquarters. So if you have multiple offices with a head office somewhere, you can have Hexentral at the head office and manage each of the offices remotely as well as the central terminals that are on there so min more terminals and this would allow you to also apply your user base across all of your branches through Hexentral and it can also link up with Active Directory so if you have a profile set up on Active Directory with a person's photo saved those can be uploaded straight through to Hexentral example connect to the Active Directory server directly and pull in all that information and then you can then set up your permissions based on those Active Directory user accounts for the system with that and it will also allow users to generate reports as long as they've got the permissions to do that on the system and so this can be temperature measurement statistics and mass detection whether or not someone's late into the building, how much overtime a person's done, the general how many hours a person's worked within a building, and these can be daily, weekly or monthly reports um, depending on what's needed for the site, and it can also have events configured to those as well. On the control client itself, it will give you a real-time count display similar to how it would work with the temperature screening cameras. So along the top of the control client, it would give you a real-time count based on whether or not a mask's been worn, normal temperature and any abnormal temperatures would give you real-time count on the new UI of the Hexentral control clients. Through the control client itself, it will also give you real-time access control results. So you can see there along the bottom, it's got the different results from when I've been detected through our main server which I'll demo up and through live through the terminal that I've got set up in the room now through that. And it will display the temperature that it's been detected and whether or not a mask was worn, as well as the person name, if they're uploaded as a person to Hexentral itself. You can also search back for on the control client. So you can see there I've done an identity search for myself on a specific day, as well as my colleague Reese and then, then listed those events coming through. And it's also taken a capture of me when I've entered the actual building there. With the attendance records, so you can see I've done a daily search of myself there, and I've got normal attendance 
triggered. My normal schedule work now is between 8.30 and 5.30 when I'm in the building on a weekday. And then you can see that I actually clocked in at 8.14 on the morning. So I worked for nine hours and 16 minutes that day. You can also calculate the amount of overtime that's been done, how late a person's been within the system. And you can also configure it to also work out the break as well for each individual person on the system. If we then go into a user, it then brings up this page here through the web client, which will give us an overall view per month of that person's attendance, whether or not they've been absent or whether or not they've had normal attendances. For this one, this was prior to me setting up the terminal for the attendance and system. And these were tests that I've done to trigger an absence through there as well. For the actual reports, these can be configured to be automatically sent to the HR teams daily, weekly or monthly, um, depending on what they need in order to be able to work out the employee's attendance log. So you can see there on the log itself, it now gives you the skin surface temperature that was detected by the terminal itself, whether or not it was a normal temperature that was detected or abnormal. So you can search back through and it will also give you the working time in minutes per day that person that's been in there. The way that our terminal's currently set up is it's set up to a check-in only terminal. So when it gets to half five on a night, it automatically ends everyone's shifts. So we're just using it as people enter in our building for that. Each user can have a different shift schedule set and access level set. So you can have weekday workers that have access rights to come in Monday to Friday and then on a weekend they can enter the building and you can also set different shift schedules depending on a person's working times so some companies have late starters that finish later on on the evenings so their schedules can be set differently to normal working hours on the system so there is the flexibility there to have multiple shift schedules through the central what we've also got is the reporting function through HipCentral through the control clients. So what we can do is create an Excel document of the export with the person's name, the temperatures, and it'll also show you the captured pictures and that person's profile picture as well via blue hyperlink within the Excel export. And you can click on those and then bring up those captures from the system itself that it's taken. So what we can do now is we can have a look at the web client of Hick Central. So we bring mine up here and go into Home. So this is the Hick Central client I've got set up on my laptop here, and just for this demo. So anyone that's used Hick Central before will be familiar with the web client there that we've got open. So what we can do is this is the main kind of backend configuration of Hick Central. And so for the Minmo terminals, we'd need to go into the physical view which is to add any physical devices into the Central system. And the Minmo terminals are access control devices. So you can see I've got the Minmo terminal already added into the unit. And it's saying it's got two card readers available and the network status is online. What we can do from this is we can go into the configuration of the unit. So if I click on configuration there, it will then take me to this page. So you can see the access control mode set to access control. So this will be authenticated users. So you do have to upload persons to Pixamral in order for them to be able to access the building. It can be configured to thermography only mode. And what this would do is just allow people in the building if they have a normal temperature and that will log it through HicCentral and any abnormal temperatures can then con control events through the, the HicCentral platform to send or be to a control client or emails or anything like that. And you can see we've got our temperature threshold, so a minimum temperature and maximum temperature of 37.5. And then we've got our actual audio prompt set up there and our work mode is set to normal as well for that. We can also get into the remote configuration of the system itself. So if click on the blue hyperlink there, it will then bring up this window, which looks similar to the IVMS 4200 remote configuration window, but we haven't had to log into the term itself or anything like that. Exemplars automatically authenticated me as having permission to get into the backend settings of the unit. So we can get into system maintenance, we can update the actual firmware on the unit through here. We could restore, reboot the unit or anything like that. We don't have to be on site to be able to do this either. 
that's the actual adding of the unit and sent in thermography mode. Do always recommend syncing the time of the unit with the server time. So the terminal's time is the same as the example server. If these do get out of sync, it can cause issue with any events or alarms triggering through to the control clients. These can come through later or not trigger through properly on the system itself, those ones. What we've then got is our logical view. So this is kind of like groups that you'd be familiar with through Ivan S4200. So you can break up or add in multiple devices into one kind of logical group. So you can have, say, external cameras if you're using cameras and internal, or break it up depending on offices. So you can say we have our dynamic office, and then we could have another logical area called uh, Dynamic Training Academy, which is a separate building in itself. So you can break it up like that through the actual system. And what we can do is if we click on door there, see we've got our Minmo terminal and door one. So we can click on that. And it will give me the status of everything in there, whether or not the door contact is set to normally open or normally close, depending on what the door lock's wired into on the back of the terminal. So all the configuration for that side of things is done through here. And the length of time in seconds that the door is unlocked for when an authenticated person is shown to the terminal. But our cells dynamic CCTV can help you with that, any configuration side of things. Please feel free to contact us. And we've also got the picture storage set to save any captures to the Excel server itself through that. And there's any of the card readers. If you wanted to use card readers on the terminal itself, those can be configured through here for that system. And you can see our access control, it's set to an all day access level and it's set in a as an attendance checkpoint. So this is checking only. So this is just checking to see if someone's late or absence as they enter the building. There's no kind of checkout I've configured on this one, but depending on the site, that can be configured and we can help with that further. So if we then go into our person tab, so this is where we would upload users to the actual system itself. So you can see I've got a dynamic group created and I've got two different groups added. I've got a technical one and the HR group. So if we click on our HR group, you can see there I've got Jonathan Gordon added in, who's our HR coordinator. So his last temperature was detected at 36.1 degrees. And to add a new person in the group, it's very simple to do. We just click on add, enter the person's name. Then we can upload a picture from the PC that we're currently on, or we can take a picture using the webcam on the PC. We can set their current skin surface temperature if it's known, whether the male, female or unknown through there. We can also assign them to an access group if we wanted to there, and also an attendance group through that this system. This is also similar to how you need to configure a person if you want to use fingerprint readers or card reader. This is where they would be assigned through for this. So if I go back onto ours, I've also got a technical group added in. As you can see, myself's added in there. I haven't got a card or fingerprint assigned to me. I'm just using it as a facial recognition terminal. So it's just the upload and capture of my face to the system. What we can also do is we can import by domain persons. So if you are using Active Directory on site, you can import domain users into the system, which makes it a lot easier, especially on larger sites with lots of users for that in there. What we can then do is if we go into access group, you can see I've got an access group called normal access created. So if I click on this, name the group just set to normal access and the access level I've set is all day access. So what that basically means is as long as it's an authenticated user, no matter what time of day, they'll be able to unlock the door. If it's a higher security site or you want to stop people entering the building when they're not supposed to, you can then limit this through the access levels should you want that for the site. And our relate person group is to dynamic and it's HR and technical ones which have been uploaded to this, which I've done as an example. And then if we were making any edits, we click on the apply to device and this will sync up all the data to the device so it knows and has the captures saved on there. 
for the actual term itself. And you can see there I've got an attendance group configured to 8.30 and 5.30 daily on this one. We've also got the visitor section on the web client. So if you had a reception and you had visitors come into the building, instead of using paper or anything like that, what we can do is just click on add here. We can put in the person's ID number, the name and the last name, take a picture of the person and assign them to a temporary visitors group. So we can set how long we can have access for the visiting reason, whether or not it's business, training or anything like that. And then we'd have an access group set up for any visitors that we could assign them to as they're added into the system there. And you can also assign a card or fingerprint if you wanted to as well for the system. And then once visitors are registered, you can then go into the visitor list and it will show you all current visitors and um, currently in the building. It gives you a nice, easy, simple way of managing visitors through Central. What we can also do is in our event and alarm section, this is where we'd set up any events or alarms that we want to be triggered by the terminal. So you can see I've got an abnormal skin surface temperature configured there um, for the system and it's set to take a capture from the optical image on the terminal and it's set to send an email using the abnormal temperature report which I've created on the server. If we then go into the alarm section, this is where we'd configure the alarm event to go through to the control clients that anyone's logged into to specific users. So if I edit this one, you can see the our unit is set to the DAR01, which is the Minmore terminal, and the triggering event is an abnormal skin temperature. We can set the alarm priority, whether it's high, low, or our own custom attribute to the system. We can set which users we want to receive the events, and then we can relate camera to this. So this one's set to the related camera being the source of the event, which is the Minmore terminal itself, and my unit's configured to bring up the live view of the terminal and to also trigger a pop-up window on the control client. So if I bring up the control client onto the screen, just back in. So this is the control client for Accenture itself. And so you can see there we've got the live view of the actual camera and then we've got the door unit as well, which has a related camera to it. And then along the bottom, we've got real-time captures as they come through for the system. So if I stand in front of my unit now, you'll then be able to see that authentication was succeeded. So if I now do it with a warm cup of water on my forehead, And see there using a cup of water but it has triggered the actual abnormal skin surface event and triggered pop up through to the control client you can see here and if I go into the picture it's then taken a capture of me and also the thermal image through the system and you can see there the temperature that's actually detected on the actual cup to my forehead which is difficult to treat because it is actually looking for a forehead rather than a cup of water to your forehead there that's just a demo of that kind of system through there. And you can see along the top, it's now triggered two abnormal temperatures. One when I was testing it this morning, and then the one that we just triggered there. And it's also shown along the bottom. So if you click on this button here, which goes to person access search. So this gives the results of all of my times that I've been scanned by the terminal. So I can click on that event there, and you can see 44.8 degrees was detected and it's taken a capture of me from the actual term itself on Accenture. So it's a nice, quick, easy way to get those results through and to also search back. What I'll also show you is the attendance side of things. So if I just bring up 
my other server. So this is the web client of our main server that we have on site here, which is set up for full attendance in that we use for Dynamic CCTV. So I've done a quick little search on myself there for daily search. So this was yesterday, which has got my time entering the building at 7.37 yesterday morning and it's then worked out automatically calculated that I was in the building yesterday for 9 hours and 53 minutes. We can also do it as a weekly search. So if I click on filter again. And then see I was absent for two days because I was on holiday this week on Tuesday and Wednesday. So, so far this week I've only worked 28 hours and 54 minutes through the system. And we can do the same again for a monthly record. And if I do it for last month, you can see those coming through there. So it's calculated that worked 79 hours at the time in which that we had the terminal set up um, in our building. What I can also do is if I click on my name in the blue text there, it will then bring up my attendance record for me as a person added to the system. So you can see there I've got my normal attendances, which is nice and easy um, for people to get a quick look per employee. And you can see there I've got absences on the Tuesday and Wednesday, which I was off. So what I can do is I can click on handle and these either allow me to correct it if it's we know it's different if it just was if I didn't just walk in front of the terminal or I can apply for leave so I can create different leave times within Hicks Central so this could be maternity or it could be annual leave so I can put annual leave in there and I can set the days that I want it to be so it would be Tuesday and Wednesday click OK and annual and save that and you can see there it will then say that I was on leave and it was annual leave. I've been able to do that because I have full admin permissions on this server and this can be limited to only be able to be done by HR to make sure everything's correct on the system or that but you would need those permissions added in in order to be able to do that. You can also use the system to calculate overtime so if anyone comes into the office early or they're in on weekends, Hick Central can automatically calculate the amount of overtime in hours or in units, depending on how your payment system works, which can then be exported and sent to HR to then pay the staff or anything like that through there, which we can cover in more detail. If you have any live projects or anything like that, you can contact us at Dynamics TV and we can cover that for you. So that's just a look at the Hixcentral Minmore terminal through the Hixcentral solution with the web client and the control client. It's a really powerful solution for attendance login and visitor login, as well as the temperature screen side of things with the events on Hixcentral. So what we can do now is just got a couple more points just to cover and then we can go on to our Q&A session. So we do have two different brochures currently that are available, which will be linked in the slides that I'll email across at the end of this webinar for our temperature screening solutions and our density control solutions, which are two brochures that we've put together and which you'll be able to view on these slides. I just wanted to mention our technical support team. So our technical support is available between 8.30 and 5.30 Monday to Friday. And we do have 10 technical support team members that won't take your call. We don't have Q&R ticketing system. If you ring our tech line, there will be someone there to answer the call and help yourself or your engineers when you're on site through there. And on the, this page, once you send the slides out, there is links to our social media and our also tech bulletin update email, which you can register at the top there. All that so I'll just move on to the Q&A session if you have any questions or you want to send anything through if you want to discuss anything in detail my contact details are on screen there as well as our project team inbox is also on screen there if you have any questions on the webinar if you hover over Q&A at the bottom of the screen and then click on Q&A and just type in your questions I can start going through there on the actual Q&A session now so 
Dave has asked if you can record employees' hourly rates of pay on Hicks Central. So the way it works on Hicks Central is it will give you either a unit measurement, so you can have units or it can do hours, but it won't allow you to put the hourly rate as such on the Hicks Central server. That would have to be manually calculated by HR for that one. Mike's asked for sites with single units, Hicks Central may be more costly, asking what functionality um, there is available within IVMS. So IVMS itself for uh, smaller installs can be used, the IVMS 4200 software. You just don't get the more advanced alarm functions or the report handling, but there is a tenants in functions through the IVMS 4200 software. What I can do is I can send you a comparison PDF across with comparisons between the IVMS 4200 software and the Hick Central solution as well. I will send those across to you there, Mike. Dave has asked if there is a process by Central to manage and um, process leave requests from employees by their managers. So this would need to be done manually currently with HR going in and say that this person's absent due to leave. There is another solution that we're currently looking at for that kind of solution there, Dave, which I'll be able to send you more information across at the beginning of next week for that. But I will remember to send you that across, Dave. Nigel's asked if it would be possible to use the IVMS 42 software locally on each site and then Hick Central to manage it centrally. Generally, I advise against this, using two different softwares to manage the same site can get messy and cause conflicts. Locally on each site, you can have a Hick Central control client, which just connects into the actual remote server. There's no issues with doing that. As long as you've got an internet connection, you can still receive those events and that user that's logging in on that control client can be restricted, so they're only allowed to see events from their site or access any personal information for people that work on their site or that are assigned to that site through there. And Mike has asked if there's any demo videos for use through IVMS. Um, so there is videos of this on our Dynamic CCTV YouTube channel, and we have put these together and they are live on our YouTube channel now which on the email that I'll send after this webinar, there is a link to our YouTube channel on that as well. Aaron has asked if we can send the comparison of him between different softwares. I will send that across as well to you for that. John has asked if the Minmo terminal integrates with other access control systems such as Paxton, um, Salvo, etc. So the Minmo terminal can work with Paxton systems. There is a document that I do have that covers this integration, which I can email over to you, John. I'll send that across for that solution. John's also asked if the Minmo terminals can only be managed by Hicks Central or can you install a DVR slash IVMS4200 on the environment. So on smaller installs, it is possible to use the IVMS4200 software, but there is limitations to that, especially with the events or if you need multiple people to be able to search those events or receive them. Using the IVMS4200 solution, only one PC can receive those events. So if you had an operator on site and you also had a manager, only one of them would be able to receive the notifications through to the PC if using the IVMS4200 solution. Whereas with Hick Central, it can be as many users as they have on the system there. Dave has asked uh, regarding the use of a fire report. So with Hick Central, when using the attendance in solution, you can have it configured so that a roll call is automatically emailed if a fire alarm is triggered on site to specific users' email addresses. So this may be the fire officer on site or the HR department. So you can check off who was known to be in the building using that roll call report. It can be automatically emailed, so you're not having to wait for it to print it out or anything like that. It's automatically emailed and a person could open that on there mobile phone for the roll call on site. So Michael has asked if an email can be sent out with a temperature alert with the associated picture. Um, so this can be done through Hick Central. Once the event's triggered, 
it will automatically send an email to specific users. You can add up to 64 people which can receive that email um, through Hicksemple and it will take send three captures through. So it'll take pre and post and the actual event itself through there. So Erin's also asked, does IVMS have to be running to enable the access if Hicksemple isn't used? So if you're using a standalone terminal, you can configure the actual users on the terminal itself, or you can use IVMS to send the users to the terminal, and then it can be standalone. It doesn't need to have the software running continuously. But if you want the events or anything like that, then you do need to use either IVMS 4200 or Hicksemple. Regarding the email side of things, the only way to receive the emails with the captures for an abnormal temperature is through the Hicksemple software. You can do it standalone or by the IVMS 4200. It won't take the send through the captures through that. You do need to use Hicksemple for that solution. Dave has also asked if a roll call report is available in IVMS 4200. So there isn't a roll call report through IVMS 4200. It does need to be the Hicksemple solution for the roll call report to be emailed automatically through there. Nick has asked if there's a free version of the Hicksemple software with the Minmore purchase. So with the Hicksemple, it is a licensed VMS for the actual software itself. It isn't free software, the Hicksemple. There is a license fee for that. The sales team can contact you with the pricing on that. And with the NVRs, it will only display the optical image. You won't get the thermal image on the NVRs using the Minmore terminal and it won't receive the events either on the recorders. Erin's asked if it would be possible to pull the log from the Minmore terminal itself. So on the unit itself, there is two USB ports on the terminal, which would allow you to export a log from the terminal itself and also 4200. Uh, but if you're using lots of different users or wanting automated logs, it does have to be the Hicksemple solution for that. So I think that's all the questions there. Um, any that I haven't um, answered on there, I will send you an email with your answers on there after the end of this webinar through there. Um, but I hope it's been informative and I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll send an email out within the next hour or so with all the slides on and then the additional information I'll send over for those as well. So thank you for joining me today and I look forward to speaking to you on the next one. Please remember to look out for us on our YouTube channels and also our social pages. We are pretty active on there for that. So thank you and take care. Cheers.